We're gonna do some uh, actual grafting now, and I know there's a lot of people who have been waiting patiently for me to get to this video, and thank you very much for waiting patiently. In a way, though, I think that these next videos on actually making the grafts may be the least important videos. Most of the crucial information that you need has already been covered. I'm just gonna show you how the grafts work. I'll reiterate some of the knife use and safety stuff as we go along, and some of the other information that we've already covered. Um, as it's relevant to this and I think most of that information kind of bears repeating anyway. All right I'm going to move you guys in real close here so you just have a frame where you can see what I'm doing close up and I'll just talk over my work. The first graft we're going to cover is a cleft graft. So with a cleft graft you take the stock, you split it in half, and then you insert a wedge-shaped piece into the split. Probably the most important thing in grafting is to make good cambial contact. So that means that this thin line between the bark and the wood, like we talked about before, has to line up on the stock and the scion. So if we have a really small piece, we just make sure to scoot it over to one side so at least it lines up well on one side. All right, to make this graft, you want, if possible, to have a straight section to work with. So I cut this off right below a bud and then there's a bud right here but there's about an inch and a half that's nice and straight there so I'll be able to make a good connection. It's just nice and straight and clean. But if that's really going to screw you up you can totally graft like there's one, two, three buds in like about an inch and a half right here. I could make a graft right there too. That's fine. If there was some reason I really wanted the graft down here I would just do it. I wouldn't put it up here just because there's a nice clean space although it is preferable. So to make this one, you want to make sure that you really center your knife um, right and split the thing right in half. That doesn't mean putting it on the growth center of the tree necessarily, but on the center, like the center of the mass of the piece. Okay, so I put my knife on here and put my hand over the top. This hand's close and then I'm kind of rocking it and pushing it in. And then once it gets started, I can just remove my hand and pry it open like this. If it's convenient, I'm going to look for a space here where there's a nice clean stem. So there's a bud there, there's a bud there, and that's clean. But here there's two buds, one, two, so this isn't as, as clean. I could totally do it though, so you know you don't have to feel like you always have to have a clean, even piece of stem here. So you can watch the video on grafting knife use and safety to get more of an idea of why I'm holding the knife this way. But basically, I'm going to get up real close here so I have a lot of control. I'm using the base of the knife to start the cut. And then I'm going to pull away. And I want to make this cut in one pass, if possible. The other thing I'm doing is I'm pulling my cut a little bit. So I'm pulling the knife this way, but I'm also pulling it down so it slices through the wood like that at an angle. Okay, so that looks pretty good, except that it's not sharp. There's a little flat spot there. It's really better if it's sharp. So when I put the knife back on, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna start biting into it carefully, and then I'm gonna pull it so that it stays flat with this cut that's already made. I don't wanna make a bunch of facets and dips and stuff like that. So I'm really kind of shaving it very carefully on that same flat plane that I've already established. We can do that on both sides until it's good. The ideal with this graft is you're just gonna pull once and then pull again and then it's done. But that's, you know, that'll happen eventually if you're good and you're in practice, but not all the time. So I just insert it in there and I line it up on one side squeeze it and look at it to make sure that there's not like a bunch of big gaps in there or anything as long as the cambiums look like they're touching that's good and then we can wrap it another thing you'll notice about how i made this graft is it's a pretty long slope so a lot of beginners will have a tendency to make these graphs really short and i would say you don't want it under an inch this could work okay, but the longer it is, the more stable it is once it's wrapped. Um, if you could imagine like, if I had two poles and I wanted to attach them together, you know intuitively that if I overlap them only a half an inch, that it's not gonna be very strong. But if I overlap them two or three inches, it's gonna be much stronger and resist bending much more. So it's the same principle here. It doesn't have to be excessively long, but over an inch is nice, like an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half, but it totally depends on the size of the scion too. A really skinny scion you can make shorter, and big fat scions you can make longer.
I really like to emphasize wrapping graphs tightly. And I think that that's probably one of the reasons that graphs fail is that people aren't wrapping them tight enough. So I like to use something stretchy. This is just a strip of plastic bag and I'm pulling on it and really stretching the plastic with each wrap. And I'm going up and down probably three times, you know, two to four times is good. And you can just tuck it under itself, pull it tight, and you're done. Now, if it's wrapped really tight like this, it's really hard to move it. Like, I can bend this, and it's just probably, I don't even know how much it's moving in there, but not much. And that's good because you don't want uh, this to bend. Like, if something comes along, like a bird lands on this or it gets bumped, you want it to be able to take a little bit of pressure. Like, if I graph this and then I'm going to plant it out in the field, I'm just going to grab it and handle it. I'm not that careful with it. You know, I'm not going to really abuse it or anything like that, but I don't think twice about just like throwing it on the ground or something. And I know you can't say that about a lot of people's graphs, and I think this is, you know, real important. First, you have to have a good fit. If the fit's not good, you're not going to be able to make it tight enough. And then just wrap that sucker really tight. Cloth graphs can be made on larger stock as well. Uh, let's say I have something this is, you know, half inch plus. Again, make sure it's really well centered. Put your hand over the top, and this is because if you slip or if you suddenly like jam through the wood, the wood here is going to hit your hand and stop it. So you can't cut this hand down here. See? And then you can use the knife to pry, but just be careful about, you know, like what it can take. Can't take a lot. If you're working with a big stock, especially if you have small scions, you should really do two graphs because it's good insurance, but it also helps it heal up faster. So I could put one in this side. One lined up on this side. Wrap that up really well and seal the end so it doesn't fill with rainwater and stuff like that using grafting seal or paint or wood glue or something. And then let it grow for a year. So if they both grow, you just pick the one that's shaped better or the stronger one and leave that and then clip this off. And what it'll do is it'll close this whole gap and heal this up much quicker. Like if both of these grew, this would probably be pretty much healed over in one year of, of good growth. Now you can do the cleft graft into large wood. Um, it's been done a lot and it is still done a lot. It's not ideal because you have to split, make this huge split in a large piece of wood and it takes a long time to heal. I mean the wood itself never heals, that, that hole is always in there. So for pieces this size I really prefer to do a bark graft which we'll get to probably in the next video. But if you are doing this, um, I would split this into probably four pieces, maybe. If it was bigger, I'd definitely split it into quarters and put in four graphs, but I prefer to just bark graph this and put in three. If you are splitting something this size, just get a cleaver or a hatchet or something like that. And there's really nothing else you need to know about cleft grafts that I can think of. Okay, the whip and tongue consists of two slashing cuts that go from one side of the stock or scion all the way to the other side. something like this. When possible, it's really nice to match the sizes of the stock like this. Now you could just put this together and wrap it. And if you wrap it really well, that's that's adequate. But I think it makes a stronger graft and I just think it's better overall to, to put the tongue in. Um, it's a little bit tricky and maybe a little dangerous for beginners, but it really is nice and it's satisfying to make the graft and have it work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from one third from the tip down here, place my knife, press on it a little so it kind of gets a bite, and then I'm going to turn the blade toward me like this. I have my thumb here for control, like 
I can't make this cut in a controlled manner without my thumb on the stock. Like there's no, there's no way, it's super dangerous. Like these, these are extreme danger if I don't have my thumb on the stock. Now it seems like if you slip, you might cut your thumb. Well, yeah, that's true, you might. So get it to bite in, tip the blade down, and I'm not gonna push on it, just push on it. I'm gonna more pull on it. Like I'm, I'm doing more of a pulling action across like this than I am pushing down on it. It's kind of a combination of the two. And then it cuts really easy, if you're knife sharp. And you don't have to do it in one pass. Like if you get part way and you, you've, you're you way down here because you've been sliding the knife down, you can just put it back in there and make some more of a cut. And so if you divide it roughly into thirds visually, you want one third sticking out the top and then the tongue is about the other third and then the last third is unsplit. Okay, so I'll show you what that looks like if I'm just doing it and not talking about it. So on this piece, the uh, scion ended up being a little bit smaller than the stock, so I'm going to look at it and see which side looks like it'll fit the best. And then just line it up on one side. And it's okay if there's a little bit of space on the other side. Just make sure the cambiums are aligned on one side. Again, wrap it tightly. If there's any buds that might be underneath the wrapping, like there was one right here and there was one here, pick those off and then wrap it. You can also use this to attach a small scion to a large stock by just cutting the one side of it instead of cutting it all the way through. And again, just try to line up uh, one side really well. You see I did this on Chuck's uh, Frankenapple in the video where we grafted his, his uh, tree last winter, or was it the winter before now? Now do remember that it's the space, think of it as the line or space between the bark and the wood that we want aligned. So in this case the bark is thicker because the stock is bigger and also because of the way it's cut uh, just on the surface and not cut in half. So when I line this up and get it ready. I'm actually going to scoot the scion just a little bit to the side to make sure that the cambium is lined up and that it's not just lining up the outsides of the bark because that's not really what it's about. It's about the cambium. Same thing, wrap it tight, you're good to go. And one last variation here. Let's say we just have a very small scion you can make a whip and tongue graft that's just lined up on one side. But we'll have to make this cut shorter to match the short cut on the smaller skinny scion. That looks good. And again, think of that line between the bark and the wood. So this has thinner bark than this does. Actually, it's really not that different, so I'm pretty good just to line it up on the outside. But if it was very different, I'd want to, you know, align it differently. Just really check that carefully when you are about to wrap it. Kind of pinch it in place, get it started gently until you get a good squeeze on it and then you can start wrapping it tighter just to make sure that you don't shift this around too much. Alright, I just want to talk about technique for a second. That's uh, pretty much what you need to know about those graphs. So you'll notice that, you know, if I don't make the, the cut in one pull like I want it, so I want this to go all the way through to the, the um, far edge over here, then I have to come back in and recut it. So what I'm going to do is really try to like place the knife carefully and come in at exactly the same flat plane that I established the first time and follow that and not make like a second cut that's off like twisted or tilted off to the side. 
So what I'm kind of going for, I guess, you know, I'm trying to say is, um, is this, like a pretty even chip, about the same thickness on both sides because I'm staying with that same flat that I started with in the first place. That's really important because, um, I mean, you can see that I'm having trouble making my cuts in one pass. The more warmed up I get during the season, the more likely I am to pull that off, you know, like that one went well. But it's just, it's just a reality that you're going to have to whittle at these things. So when you do, just really try to come in flat and keep that same plane. If you've established a flat plane to start with and, you know, assuming that that's where you wanted to start it in the first place, just really try to stick with that and take thin, even, accurate shavings. And again, as always, I recommend getting a big old pile of these sticks. Just get a bunch of prunings or willow sticks or whatever you got laying around or can get. And just sit around and practice making those flat cuts and uh, check them and just look at them and see if they're flat. Feel them. And if you can make flat cuts like this, you're pretty much set. I mean, that's what it's really all about. Okay, that's it for those two graphs. And I think that's pretty much all you need to know about those. We'll have uh, another video with a couple more graphs and then a video on aftercare, what to do with your graphs to keep them alive and thriving and what to do with them after they heal in the summer.